Iran has just launched an attack on Israel. It's a retaliatory attack. And the full scale of the retaliation is yet to be seen. It's yet to be assessed because it's still early days into this. But in my recent video on the topic, I had assessed and it turns out correctly assessed that Israel would face a retaliation from Iran. And this is in response to the recent attack by Israel on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, in Syria. And as far as we know, the Iranians, uh, like I had assessed, have used uh, a large number of drones and they have used missiles as well to strike at various targets within Israel. So the score essentially is 1-1. The Israelis attacked Iran, the Iranian consulate, and the Iranians have responded by uh, striking various targets in Israel. How much damage has happened and all that needs to be seen. It needs to be verified. It's still early days. But that's the deal right now. That's the situation. 1-1 one, one is the score. Now the ball is in somebody's court. Is it in Israel's court? Is it in somebody else's court? That needs to be seen. But here's what the Iranian embassy in the UN had to say about this. And I'm reading this out. So the Iranian embassy says, as far as we are concerned, this event is over. If Israel makes another mistake and response to our attack, our response will be much harsher. This is a conflict between Iran and the, in quotes, unruly Israeli regime and the US should not interfere in it. So the, Isra so the Iranians are saying that now the deal is done, it's 1-1, there's no need for further action. If Israel goes ahead and responds to this, then our, re our response, our retaliation will be even more massive, it will be harsher. And they're also warning the US to not get involved in this matter. So now the ball is in either Israel's court or the American court, and why is that? So the US is Ira Israel's number one ally. It's Israel's staunchest ally. And Israel will essentially do what the Americans tell them to do. So here are the possibilities. The first possibility is that Israel assesses that the damage hasn't been very massive, very large, and they let the matter be, and that's it. Then the story is over. That's possibility number one. Possibility number two is that Israel goes ahead and responds to this. I mean, when they attacked the Iranian consulate in Damascus, they were obviously expecting an Iranian response, retaliation. And obviously, they had, there, are, there are some calculations that must have been behind this. Maybe they want to, uh, you know, open a new conflict in the region. Maybe they want to strike at Iran and they need the pretext to do this. So, maybe the Israelis will go ahead and then launch further strikes against Iran, possibly on Iranian soil itself. The last attack was on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, which is not Iranian territory. The consulate is sovereign territory of Iran, but there was not a strike on Iranian soil. So this time, possibly, the second possibility is that Israel goes ahead and attacks targets on Iranian soil itself. Uh, the Israelis have been very worried about the Iranian nuclear program. Iran could be close to being a nuclear uh, weapons power, a nuclear state. They probably have sufficient fissile material for a few nuclear bombs. It's quite possible. It's even quite likely. So the Israelis are worried about that and they may go ahead and strike various Iranian nuclear facilities, which will be well guarded and entrenched and all that, but they will try and strike at that. That's the second possibility. And the Israelis have various means of doing it. They have the F-35 fighter plane, which is a stealth fighter, which is hard to detect uh, on radar. They could use missiles. They could use other means as well. So that's the, that's the situation. So Israel could go ahead and do this. Now, if that happens, is Iran once again has to respond, and there you see the, uh, there you see a new conflict opening up in this region, which is bad for everybody. And we know that Israel has been fighting this war in, in against Hamas in Gaza. Their stockpiles of ammunition would not be at their optimum level, optimal level, they could be possibly low. The Americans have already been supplying a tremendous amounts of amount of arms and ammunition to Ukraine. So if Israel's weapon stockpiles, ammunition stockpiles start running low, what happens? So the Americans will probably have to get involved in this case, in this scenario, the second scenario. And the Americans have a number of military bases in the region, in the Middle East region. And if they get involved, that could invite strikes on American bases from Iran, which again is a significant escalation. Then you're seeing a war between Israel and the US on one side and Iran on the other side. Now, there are these uh, hawks in the US establishment that have wanted a war with Iran for a very long time. 
essentially since 1979. So this could be their opportunity. But that could significantly disrupt everything in the region. The Strait of Hormuz is especially important when it comes to the energy supply that flows out of the of the of the Gulf region. You don't want that to be disrupted. That could you know lead to all kinds of uh, second order effects, bad effects worldwide. The prices of oil could rise, could skyrocket, and that could be all kinds of complications and so on. So you could see a new conflict emerging in this second scenario if Israel goes ahead in response to this attack by Iran. So these are the two scenarios, not a good deal for the world. It could be a disaster, it could be a catastrophe if this, you know, turns into a new conflict. There's already this big conflict going on in Ukraine, a long war kind of scenario. There's the second conflict in the Middle East, which is Israel versus Gaza. So Hezbollah also is kind of involved. And now you could have Iran getting dragged into a war. Iran had no choice but to respond. Otherwise, they would have lost all credibility. So they've gone ahead and responded. The score is 1-1 essentially. So now the ball is actually in the American court. If the Americans can persuade Israel to not respond, then the matter slowly simmers down. But if they go ahead and give Israel the green light to respond to this attack by Iran, then you could see the start of a new war in the region. And that's not good for anybody. That's not good for India. I assure you of that. So these are, these are the two situations, the two scenarios. Israel has the choice to either respond or not respond. And essentially, it's the US that has to decide whether to allow Israel to respond or not. What's going to happen? We don't know. One hopes that the situation calms down. One hopes that Israel does not respond. Hopefully, from the Israeli perspective, the damage hasn't been too great. But if they do respond, all bets are off. We can see the start of a larger conflict in the region, which is which doesn't you know serve anyone's interest. But that is the situation right now. Thank you for watching. Brief video, and I'll see you in the next one.